I got bit by a hornet or a wasp or a bee or some sort of super bee right in the middle of the forehead. It hurt like hell. And no, I'm not at all tough. Donald Trump's return to the 2020 campaign trail in mid-June in Tulsa, Oklahoma was supposed to be a triumphant sign to the country that he was back. I'm back, baby. After months of quarantining because of the coronavirus, weeks of protests following the death of George Floyd at the hands of the Minneapolis Police Department, and piles of polls suggesting that his numbers were tanking, this was the moment where the great Trumpian comeback began. Trump touted nearly a million RSVPs for tickets to the event. His campaign set up a massive outdoor stage so the president could address the overflow crowd that couldn't fit in the 19,000 seat arena. And then this happened. The Tulsa fire marshal told CNN that just under 6,200 people had come through the gates for Trump's speech, meaning that the arena was at best one third full. Sidebar, 6,200 people is slightly less than 1 million. And sidebar, oomph, actually, oomph, oomph, double oomph. Last one hurt. For Trump, the massive rally that wasn't is just the latest example of how bad things have gotten for him with less than five, yes, count them, five. Yeah, it checks out. Months to go before voters head to the polls to decide whether he deserves a second term. Simply put, everywhere Donald Trump looks right now, oh, 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 oh. He sees political fires that absolutely threaten to engulf his presidency. Think about it, right? The Supreme Court, despite having two handpicked Trump approved justices, has handed the president two stunning rebukes in recent weeks. One on gay, lesbian, and transgender rights in the workplace, and the other that blocked the president from ending the deferred action for childhood arrivals, known as DACA, for children brought to America illegally. And there's Congress, where Senate Republicans have started to show, finally, an increased willingness to buck Trump on certain things. In rapid succession, in June, all of this happened. Every Republican senator wore a mask at a press conference announcing a package of police reforms after Donald Trump has pointedly refused to wear a mask. Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander insisted that there will be a second surge of the coronavirus. IOS Senator Chuck Grassley announced that he would introduce legislation to protect inspectors general as he continues to seek answers from the White House on two firings by Trump in the last month. Then there's Trump's repeated attempts to suggest that the United States has effectively beaten the coronavirus. The problem with that is they are belied daily by reports that almost half the states in this country are experiencing an increase in cases, including in big population states run by Republican governors like Florida, Arizona, and Texas. And then, and then, and then, there is Trump's absolutely tone-deaf response to the death of George Floyd while in the custody of police in Minneapolis, most notably the photo op of Trump holding a Bible outside of St. John's Church in Washington. All of it's been roundly criticized, including by many former top White House officials. Quote, Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try, said former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis in June. He added, instead, he tries to divide us, end quote. Another former Trump administration official, National Security Advisor John Bolton, is out with a memoir of his time in the White House that suggests, among many other things, that Donald Trump sought the help of the Chinese president in his 2020 re-election race and seemingly approved of the use of concentration camps by China. Bolton, in an interview with ABC News, said that Trump is not, quote, fit for office and doesn't have the, quote, competence to carry out the job. Now, this series of body blows, not gonna punch myself again, have badly damaged Trump's chances of winning a second term. His approval rating has absolutely collapsed. That's me collapsing. In early June in Gallup polling, CNN's latest national poll shows Trump trailing Vice President Joe Biden by 14 points. Swing state polling shows similar gaps widening between Biden and Trump. So add it all up and you get this. In a roller coaster presidency, this is, whoop, it's off the screen, the lowest that Trump has ever been. And that's even taking into account the fact he was impeached. Why? Well, because unlike that impeachment by the House of Representatives in early 2020, though it seems like 100 years ago, Trump's actions over the past month have led to a shrinkage in his support rather than, as impeachment did, a rallying effect among his base. So it's too soon to declare Donald Trump's presidency over. There are still 133 days left before the election. <laughs> yes, I'm counting. But there's no question, no question, that he now faces longer odds than ever before in his bid to win a second term. And as he so often does when faced with facts he doesn't like, Trump turns to favorable outlets and to Twitter to create 
his own reality. If you look at the polls, we're way ahead of Sleepy Joe in terms of enthusiasm. We have enthusiasm like they've never seen before, actually. And Joe has the lowest, I hear, enthusiasm on record. Of the coronavirus, Trump has said this. I don't even like to talk about that because uh, it's fading away. It's uh, not fading away. Ask Florida, Texas, and Arizona. Following the Supreme Court's ruling on DACA, Trump took to Twitter to tweet this, quote, these horrible and politically charged decisions coming out of the Supreme Court are shotgun blasts into the face of people that are proud to call themselves Republicans or conservatives. We need more justices or we will lose our second amendment and everything else. Vote Trump 2020, end quote. He then added in a subsequent tweet, because one wasn't enough, quote, do you get the impression that the Supreme Court doesn't like me, end quote. Sidebar, Trump has nominated two Supreme Court justices, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. Chief Justice John Roberts, as well as Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito were also appointed by Republican presidents. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure they don't like him. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal, Trump tried to take credit for drawing attention to Juneteenth, June 19th, which is a day of remembrance commemorating the official end of slavery in the United States. Here's what Trump had to say, quote, I did something good. I made Juneteenth very famous. It's actually an important event, an important time, but nobody had ever heard of it, end quote. So 47 states in the District of Columbia celebrate Juneteenth as a holiday, but yeah, no, no one's ever heard of it. Okay. Now Trump's retreat into an alternate reality, however, doesn't change the actual reality. And that reality is this. Trump is not only faced with the worst political outlook of his presidency, but he is also facing signs of a revolt from within his own party and even among those who he once relied upon as trusted advisors. Trump likes to insist that he does best when all is chaos around him and when people are counting him out. Well, <laughs> now's his chance to prove it because he's never faced more political chaos and bad news than he is staring down right this minute. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Make sure to check them all out.